Howdy. A few months ago, I made a speed booster adapter out of uh, some scrap parts, a little bit of wood, and a magnifying glass. A speed booster adapter is a cool piece of camera gear that takes the light coming in from the lens and compresses it before it hits the camera's sensor. Having that extra piece of glass in there makes it a lot wider and a lot brighter, which are both nice to have, but obviously it looks kind of blurry and out of focus with the piece of glass that I used. It is literally just a magnifying glass with a wood housing. And today I'm going to try to fix that by using some different glass in here and mounting it a little better using 3D printing. Now, I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do it yet, but I know I wanna keep this nice housing, but make the glass a little better quality. First step is to crack it open and get that old magnifying lens out of there. The lens will come out the top, um, and I just hot glued it in, because I had a feeling that I might wanna switch it out for a different piece of glass later. So, I mean, there's a chance I can just pop it straight out, but I don't wanna break this wood. Oh, there we go. Then it was time to experiment with new glass. Let's look at a proper speed booster for my Canon. I used to use a speed booster for literally everything when I was shooting on my Canon M50, but it doesn't fit on the Sony cameras that I shoot on now, so I'm trying to make something that'll be somewhat comparable without buying a new piece of kit. I'd rather not ruin my Canon speed booster to make the new one, so first I'm gonna experiment with glass from these cheap wide angle adapters to see if I can get better results than the magnifying glass. So we want light that comes in to be compressed. So just a wide angle lens, but backwards. So this wide angle should work, but I think it's gonna have the same edge blurring problem that the magnifying glass had. The hope is that this new glass will widen the image and stay sharper than the old one, but I was doubtful. I'll just hot glue it in there for a quick test. Okay, this is promising. It's definitely wider. It feels crisper, so it works. It's just still the focus plane at the edge is still screwed up. Using the glass from the wide angle adapter definitely yielded a better result than my original design with the magnifying glass. Before I could only keep focus on the very center of the frame, whereas on this one it's a little bit wider, but the edges are still definitely very blurry. This would work for photography or an artsy short film or something, but again, I'm going for a professional look here. I played around with the idea of using a second piece of glass to slightly adjust the focal plane, but quickly accepted I was massively in over my head without the ability to actually make pieces of glass myself, so I took a break to do some strategy rethinking. Okay, so it feels like at this point I have two options. One, I can keep the speed booster as is with the minor improvements that I've made to it, swapping the glass. It's a bit better than before, but realistically, it's still a fun effects lens and not something for professional use. Option two, I could tear open this Canon speed booster and see if I can find a way to be able to use that glass both on this one and on the one I'm making for my Sony cameras. So as long as I'm not using both cameras at the same time, I can just take out that piece of glass, move it back and forth. Now that would be risky, I don't want to break this nice adapter, but I figured something out that I should have realized a lot earlier that'll make this much easier. So I was gonna take this whole Canon adapter apart and figure out how to get that glass out without ruining this adapter. And then I realized you can just unscrew this glass for minor adjustments. And if you just keep unscrewing it, it comes out all the way. Because I can non-destructively remove the optics from that adapter, it's really not too hard to 3D print a new housing and have a speed booster on any mount I want. So I went ahead and modeled a barrel to put this thing into the wooden Sony adapter I've already made. So on the adapter, we add this 3D printed part and then the glass should be able to just screw into there. The threads were too fine for my current printer setup, so I just made sure the bottom layer flared out a little bit, giving the threads something to bite into. And it actually feels like very firm. It works weirdly well for how low effort it is. And I can pretty much put it together like this without worrying too much about the total distance, because if the focus is slightly off, then I can just screw this glass element in or out a little bit, and then I can just swap it out if I want the Canon adapter back, you know? 
From here, everything should be smooth sailing. I melted some screw holes through the 3D print and started sticking it all together. Now, I'm sure some people would question the practicality of this project. If I have two speed boosters sharing one piece of glass, what's even the point? Why didn't I sell the Canon one and buy a Sony one? It's partially because it's just fun, partially for the satisfaction of using something handmade, but mainly it's about finding new ways to use old stuff fully exploring all the possible use cases of things I already have instead of succumbing to gear acquisition syndrome and just buying something. You can call it being broke or you can call it being resourceful, but either way I had a blast making it. Okay, that is an speed booster. This thing looks sick. So I probably have to set this a little deeper, which I can do by just turning it. Looks pretty sweet on a camera. <laughs> All that's left at this point is to test it out on my main camera and see what the image looks like. I'm trying it with an old APS-C super zoom so the corners will vignette a little bit. That's not from the speed booster itself. At the wide end this turns a 16mm into an 11mm, which is very handy in my small room. It feels super reliable, easy to pull focus, it's just wider and brighter which is exactly what I was going for. Since I used real speed booster glass, it mostly just looks like a normal lens, aside from one small mistake. You might have noticed in some of these shots there's sort of a vertical lens flare thing going on when it's pointed at bright lights. I don't think it's super distracting, it looks kind of cool, but that is not supposed to be there. Between finishing the project and filming these sample shots, I may have slightly broken the lens already because apparently I can't have anything too nice around here. Stupid mistake, honestly, I was messing with it after it was done, trying to get the threads on the 3D print a little smoother, blasted it with a heat gun a little too hard and thermal fractured the front glass. But it's just a hairline crack, not like an impact or anything, so it doesn't affect the image much. In most shots, you wouldn't even notice at all, and when it does show up, I think it can look kinda cool. Like, I'm shooting on it right now. I don't know if it shows up on these lights at all, but it's pretty subtle. I think it's a cool effect, much more tasteful than the dreamy, washed out insanity of the last iteration. Actually, I haven't tried this outside yet. I should do that. When I finished this adapter and then promptly cracked the glass, I felt a little goofy. The whole point of this thing was reusing old gear, not buying anything new without breaking the old stuff but I lucked out, it's still completely usable and much better than the old version. You know, I feel like most of my projects are going against the rule of if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but at the end of the day, I have a piece of camera gear that I didn't have before, didn't have to buy anything, and only spent a day making it. I hope this encourages you to make use of something you've got sitting on a shelf somewhere, and to not be afraid to break something that ain't broken. Thank you for your time. And as always, if you'd like to support the channel in these videos by becoming a member or donating, visit my website, evanmonsma.com. Thank you.